Well, then, let's pray. Father God, I do thank you, Lord, today. I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, of being here. Lord, you are you're magnificent. It's just not hard to be in your presence. Lord, I need your help today. Lord, I, I need this to be you and me. So strong. So Lord, I just thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name. Can't even think of anything else to pray. I must be done. All right. Well, welcome to Back to the Healing series. Okay, it has been fairly theoretical to this point. We've learned an awful lot of stuff and learned what the scripture has to say. I think you're going to be kind of semi-amazed today because I think I only have one scripture. <coughs> so, but we're going to be covering an awful lot of ground in the fact that this is a... <laughs> This is weird, okay? I don't know. This is going to be kind of a different day. This is going to be fun because I'm going to be doing something that is recapping an entire series that I've done. Okay? So if you don't get enough information today, fine. We've got plenty to give to you, okay? We're going to be talking about how, our, how we're doing healing in a partnership. That's just a fun way of looking at it. Here we go. We talked about compassion last week. How we need to be, when it comes to healing, we need to be quickly laying down our soul, quickly loving others. It's got to be quick. Loving them makes everything function. That's what makes the whole thing work, is loving them. If you don't love them, you're, you're, you're in trouble. you got to love them. Uh, we went over the different words, the metriopatheo, the little passion, the measured passion, you know, yeah, you're supposed to have some. You know, it's measured. It's okay. <laughs> then we got into sympatheo, sympatheo, sympathy. Sum, together, patheo, passion. See, patheo is right there. Metro, limited passion, then passion together. Sympathy, have the same passion as somebody else. To feel what they're feeling, to, to go through what they're going through. And then came sumpasco. Pasco is a stronger word than patheo. Patheo is feelings. Pasco is pain. This is actually having the same pain as somebody. This is what in, in English we would say is empathy. Sympathy is having the same feeling. Empathy is having the same pain. It's to really be deep with somebody. And then came aleo, aleos, eleemon. Mostly translated as mercy. Have mercy for somebody. What a strong word. You realize that we are now, this is going up the scale in depth. And to actually have mercy for somebody is huge. To have the ability to, to feel what's going on for them, but to, to do whatever is necessary to help them because you see their pain, you understand things, you're going to do something different for them. That's what mercy is all about. We keep getting this idea that mercy is this cute little fuzzy little, oh, he has mercy on you. Mercy feelings. No, mercy is huge and it's deep. Feeling mercy is, is going to get through to you. Oiktiero, oiktirmos, oiktirman. They are also the same root words, but this is a compassion, this is a depth, okay, of compassion that is really, really strong. It's a very, very deep thing to have this kind of compassion. And then we got into the fun ones to say, the splank nizomai. And splanknon. This is the one that's hard to explain because it means the absolute bowels to have the bowels of compassion, the depth that goes clear. This is the gut-wrenching things that happen. God still wants us to have them. Now, we, we covered these last week pretty fair to understand that there's a degree of depth. You go deeper in compassion and deeper in compassion. So how deep is your compassion for people? What are you willing to have happen? What are you willing to see and do? Uh, what price are you willing to pay? See, there's the problem, is how much you're willing to pay. 
Today we're going to start off by talking about character. Character. We have to have the character in, in ministry. Here's one of the big deals. We want to see healing happen. How cool. But we've got to understand that we've got to get out of ourselves. If you're going to be healing people and you're going to be walking into a healing ministry where you're just starting to, then they actually must rely on the fact that you have godly character. If you don't have godly character, then why would we allow you to minister? The Bible says, know those that labor among you. See, if you're not part of doing stuff, if you're not showing up for the different things we have going, if you're not, not involved, then why would we allow you to be one of the ministry team? Why would we allow any of that? You say, well, that's sure picky. You're sure judgmental. Oh, no, no, no. The Bible says, know those that labor among you. We've got to know that the people who are going to be under your ministry are going to have safety. They're going to be taken care of, which means we're going to have to know that you have character. We must be getting out of ourselves. I, 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 that's a weird way of putting it, but really, we are so into ourselves. We've got to be getting out of ourselves. We've got to get away from the selfishness and start. And this is why we want to do the compassion last week, because compassion is going to take us out of ourselves. That's the big, but we've got to start getting out of ourselves. We've got to understand that we've got to be mature in Christ. Now, I remember recently, not too far past, somebody preaching an entire series on what is Christian maturity. Okay? <laughs> and see, you see, people say, you're actually expecting us to remember these things? Yep, sorry, it's the truth. Are you mature? Are you the adult in the room? Are you the one, when all else fails, you're the one that can be counted on to do what is right? To be able to take other people and take them, take care of them, do stuff, you're the mature one. Okay, well, it's the same thing when it comes to healing. Are you going to be the one that's mature in the room that's going to say, I will, I will take care of this situation? We've got to have some maturity. There must be work. We must be working on our compassion, working on that, continually growing deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, we all want the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I have had so many people talk about, you know, when are we going to have more body ministry? When are we going to do things? We want to see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, I understand wanting to have the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I want them more than anybody. Okay? And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. However, we must first have godly character. People have asked me to preach or teach on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I have a whole series on it. And I would not let us do the manifestations of the Holy Spirit first. Because, why? Because we've got to teach on the godly character before we get into the manifestations. It's got to be true. We need the fruit of the Spirit first. Now, if you notice, there's two great big trees in the back of the room. Right up there. The tree of life and the tree of and the fruit of the flesh. Those two trees were coming out of the exact series that we were wanting to teach on the character of God, on us having His character, before I could teach on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what happened. The outcome was we started working on this, and people started finding out there's an awful lot they needed to work on about the character of God. So when we taught on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, people were saying... I don't think I qualify. We didn't see an increase in the manifestations of the Holy Spirit like I expected to see once we taught on it, how people would be walking in these things. Why not? Hmm? Because we were also being convicted about the character of God. Okay? As long as we have fear of what people are thinking of us, we do not have character of God. See? It's so true. Dying to the flesh is of utmost importance here. Letting the Spirit out through our soul. To the, 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 manif the, the fruit of the Spirit is letting the character of God through our spirit, out through our unhardened heart, into our soul that is being changed to be like Him. And since soul is how we relate to other people, it's how we get the character of God through us out to other people good way of looking at it, isn't it? So let's talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. Love, 
We can stop right there, have the altar call, and go home. Okay? That's the big one. The fruit of the Spirit is love. You see, when we try to love out of ourself, how is that working out for us? Since God is love, then we through our flesh cannot love. You following that? Okay? We're going to have to love how? We're going to have to love because He loves. Okay? So love is the big one. Love is the biggie. It's the first one. And then comes joy. Oh, goody. Oh, joy. Okay? Joy. Do you have the joy of your Christian walk? Man, you know, and I, I keep hearing, you know, having people having a tough time, bad day, whatever. My question is, always sticks in my mind is, okay, I understand having a bad day. I understand having things tough. Did it steal your joy in the process? If it stole your joy, then you got hammered. You allowed the enemy to steal all your goods. I've always loved that message. That's so true. As long as I don't have joy, Satan just, he can just walk all over me. Joy is huge. Then there's always this good one. How's your peace? Okay, we know that God is the God of peace. Therefore, any area in your life that does not have peace does not have God. That's a trippy one, isn't it? Okay, How is the, how's your peace factor? How's the turmoil around you? How's the stress? See, stress levels should be completely taken care of by the peace of God. We should have very little stress. Okay, now I understand. Uh, I also live in the same world of the world that you do. Okay, I get tired just like you do. I go through all sorts of things just like you do. Okay. I understand. It's not like I'm saying that I have got this whole thing conquered all the time. But I'll tell you one thing. When I start feeling myself start getting stressed out, and you can feel it in your stomach. You can feel how it just starts messing with you. As soon as I feel that, I have been for quite a while now really pushing to say, nope, I will not allow that. I've got to stop what's happening. I'm not going to let it steal my peace. If I don't have peace, then I'm going to get really tired. It's bad enough just to have all the work and be tired. Okay? How about peace? Long-suffering. This is one that people don't understand. It's also translated in many places in scriptures as patience. What kind of patience? Well, there's two kind of words that are translated patience. One is hupomene, hupo, under, meno, to stay. To stay under a situation. Patience. Stay under it. That's cool. Hupomene, patience. But that's situational patience. Macrothumia, macro, long, thumia, passions, everything, long suffering. It's a people patience. It's the patience we have to have with you. <laughs> People patience is the one that'll bite you. Okay, that's the one. And, it, and every time you find the word macro through me in the scripture, it is talking about people. It's kind of a fascinating deal. Do we have long suffering? We have people patience. Well, it's amazing. You know, we can put up with how come the computer's not working. That's fine. That's one thing. But man, it's that boss. You know? <laughs> I can usually get people going to talking about their boss. Uh, you know. What happens when you're the boss? You know, then, uh, uh, then you got a lot of people underneath you with a lot of stress. <laughs> it's going to take long suffering. Usefulness. Most translations translated as kindness. Okay. Greek word krestotes literally means usefulness. You see, the Holy Spirit is useful. God is useful. It says that the kindness of God leads us to repentance. It's the usefulness of God that leads us to repentance. It's his ability to do something about it. But when the fruit of the Spirit comes, that means that God can use you. Are you useful? When you walk into somebody else's life, do they consider you as a useful thing or as just a pain? Goodness. Just being good. Agathosine. Hey, we can do all these in the Greek if you want. But goodness, just being good. Doing good things, being good. How about this one? Faith. 
Now we're going to be hitting this one also because faith is also a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. This makes a big deal because when faith as a fruit of the Holy Spirit is in you, what have you got? A solid foundation of faith that is continual where you touch other people with faith. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Now, what happens when you have a manifestation of faith? We'll talk about that in a little bit. There's a difference. Meekness. Meekness is one of the strongest words in the Scriptures. I love this word. People don't get meekness very often. Meekness is a tough deal because meekness means to be totally submitted to authority and empowered by that authority, having no agenda of your own. I love teaching on meekness because people look at it and go, ain't no way. <laughs> to be totally submitted to authority, empowered by that authority, and having no agenda of your own. Now, if you went to your job and you started to be meek in your job, where you did your job with power, understand, meekness is not weakness. It's not even gentleness, even though some translations say that. Meekness is submission. It's a powerful thing. You go into your job and you use meekness where you're submitted and you use the people above you as their authority to get your work done. You submit to their authority, be empowered by their authority and have no agenda of your own. You're doing their agenda. You'll find your job will be a lot more peaceful. Meekness is powerful. I love meekness. Meekness is really powerful. And the last one being the one nobody wants to talk about. Greek word... Eggkrateia. Isn't that a fun one to say? Eggkrateia. And people go, I like eggs. Different thing. Egg is a derivative of the word en, which means in. It means inner. Krateo, krateo means dominion. And it means to have dominion on the inside. You dominate what's going on inside you. I, I should have a raise of hands on this one, but is anybody... Uh, been angry this last week? <laughs> How's your egg crateya? <laughs> control, self-control on the inside. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Okay, all of these are the attributes of God touching others through my submitted soul. Now, that's a good way of putting it. For those of you who are taking notes, I'll just leave that there for just a second. It's the attributes of God touching others through my submitted soul. That's a wonderful way of putting it. I like that. How's your submitted soul? Well, my soul's fine. I know, I'm talking about the submitted one. <laughs> like I said, my soul's fine. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11 says this, For through the Spirit is given to one a word... This is the list of the gracelets by Charismata. For through the Spirit is giving to one a word of wisdom... And to another, a word of knowledge. And according to the same Spirit. And to another, faith by the same Spirit. And to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, workings of powers. And to another, prophecy. And to another, discerning of spirits. And to another, kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But the one and same Spirit works all these things, distributing separately to each as He wills. This passage has caused all sorts of interesting speculations. And man, did we have a hard time with this when I was a Baptist. This passage drove us crazy. Um, I remember the pastor that was my, my senior pastor. I was a youth pastor in his church when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I went to the vineyard. Uh, he sent me. He sent me to the vineyard to pick up on stuff on, on uh, church growth. And the seminar that, he went, that I went to was signs and wonders in church growth. He says, they're going to talk about healing some, throw that away, and bring back the church growth stuff. <laughs> I couldn't have anything to throw away because the whole thing was how to heal people, how to grow your church by healing people. Okay? So, how am I going to throw away all this stuff? <laughs> I couldn't. Well, I got there, and they taught on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to do it pretty much the way I'm going to be doing it today. Fascinating. I went back. You see, he had gone to all these different schools and everything, teaching on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit <laughs> his way, explaining them away 
explaining all the nice little ways that these, and I mean, you know, the tongues is just learning, being able to learn languages. This is my, my senior pastor, okay? And it was tough. What was interpretation of tongues? That was somebody who sat down and translated different languages in the Bible into languages. See, he, they had lots of ways of doing all this. It just didn't seem to work. Okay, so I was having a hard time with it. The day I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I came back on that Sunday, walked into the pastor's office and said, well, we're having a meeting before service on, on Sunday morning. I says, well, thanks for sending me to that. He says, um, he says, but I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I just need to let you know that before anything happens. I said, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit on, on Saturday. And I says, and they also taught us that the, the, the manifestations or the, the gifts of the Spirit are a little bit different than you've been teaching them. And I says, and he went, eh, whatever, let's have church. And said, let's just go. He just kind of blew the whole thing off. That's kind of interesting. So about three months later, his wife left him. His family fell apart. Everything just went absolutely crazy. And so now what? You know, it was, it was kind of difficult, kind of tough. Uh, he needed it. He needed what I had gotten. He was supposed to have gone, and he didn't. Anyway, so now we have a whole bunch of these. Let's go over them one at a time. But let's uh, first understand they are broken up into three groups. There's the revelatory or the revelation gifts. There's the power gifts, and there's the inspiration or the vocal gifts. And the revelation gifts are, uh, you'll love this. This is a neat way of putting it. The revelation gifts are the eyes of God. The power gifts, the hand of God. And the inspiration of vocal gifts is the voice of God. How cool. The hand of God, the eyes of God, the voice of God. This is too cool. The revelation. I love it. Manifestations. There are all of the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, that's why they're called the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, Lee. I, we picked up on that. No, no, you got to understand, if you're not trusting the Holy Spirit, you don't get the manifestations. Hello? The Holy Spirit is the one we're talking about here. So they are of the Holy Spirit. It's God touching people through people. Now, if you're a person, raise your hand. <laughs> Okay? That means that you're the one that God can use to touch other people. Now, if you saw, looked around the room, you saw there was a whole bunch of people with their hands in the air. Those are your targets. See, you had your hand in there as one to volunteer. They had their hands in the air to be the one to be touched by you. This is not physical science. Please understand that we are talking now the epiphysics of the kingdom realm. We are going outside the physical into the world of the kingdom. We are going outside the physical. We are these and the gifts are not yours to own. And I've heard people say, "Well, I have the gift of do you? That's yours to own?" No. You may be often used in that area and that's where your faith goes and the Lord is able to use that in you a lot. That's fine, but that's not yours to own. But if you walk around saying, this is, you know, people say, well, I have the gift of healing. Slick. Use healing a lot. Go for it. I, I'm not saying don't use it. It's all, it's great. Use it. It's not yours. As soon as you think it's yours, you're going to misuse it. You've got to understand that it's always his. I've just seen too many misuses. You want to know why we as, as the Baptists hated all this stuff? Because we saw the abuses of it. Of course, we didn't see that we were doing none of it. Nobody was being healed. We just saw the abuses, how some people were being damaged. We couldn't, for the life of us, see that all the people who were being healed. Yeah, it was driving us crazy, okay? It's a privilege to be used of God. It's an honor. It's a privilege. We've got to be open and be willing to be used. Now, here's the part that makes... I'm going to be hitting this over and over and over and over again today. If you do not have a willingness to be used, you are limiting what God can do in your life. 
If you're saying, well, I've got all these problems and I don't know, then get your problems dealt with. We've got too many people who know how to minister in too many ways to help you get rid of the stuff that you're dealing with. So get rid of the stuff. I don't know how else to say that. I don't know if there's a better way, a better sentence. But listen, you're not done. You're not done. You've got stuff that needs to be dealt with. Everyone, including me. It's a continual thing. If we're not continually working on our stuff, how are we going to have the higher levels of freedom? Okay? People, this is something that men think on a general, regular basis. They come in and they get healed from one thing, and then they say, I'm good to go. I don't ever have to do that again. Man, I went in and got, I got that free. I'm, I'm fine. No, you're not. No, you're not. One more time. No, you're not. We've got things to still do, folks, until you're Christ-like, you're not done. So, are you done? That means you're Christ-like if you are. Can we test the theory? But you need to know when the manifestations are happening. You need to know when they're happening. You need to know how things are going. What is really funny is we do them so easily, they happen so common that we don't even realize what's going on. You got to understand. We get word of knowledge, word of wisdom all the time, especially in ministry. We have the gift, the gifts of healing flowing when we're doing face to face. Folks, this is so quick and so easy. It's amazing how often you prophesy and don't even think about it. You got to know what's happening. So let's look at the revelation gifts, the revelatory, the revelation gifts, the eyes of God, how God is seeing things. We're seeing things through God's eyes. Word of wisdom. It's the first one on the list. Okay, word of wisdom. It's giving a supernatural action step. It's telling somebody to do something, but it's not out of your great wisdom and advice. It's the Holy Spirit. And, you just, and you're sitting here talking to somebody, and I say, you know what you need to do? And this just kind of came over you. Just, yeah, you need to do this. It's simple. It's so smooth and easy that we just miss it an awful lot. Um, it involves action, and it involves obedience. It's something you're supposed to do. But there's lots of scriptures about getting, people getting a word of wisdom. Okay? Word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is... Knowing something you didn't, you couldn't know. Knowing something you couldn't know. Okay, you're sitting there all of a sudden. You just realize that, you know, it's knowing something you can't know. We've had so many neat understandings about this. Uh, when we used to hang around the vineyard, uh, there was a, a neat night. This I think it was Danny Daniels that was up front. And, um, he got a word of knowledge. He says. There's somebody here that is dealing with, and I think it was a cancer, if I'm not mistaken, that you have this, this thing. It says, if you'll come up here tonight, we'll lay hands on you. You'll be healed tonight. After about 10, 10 minutes or so, and they're doing all sorts of other stuff, he says, about that guy with the cancer, it's a guy. You're, you're, it's a man, okay? The Lord says, if you come up here tonight, you'll be healed. Things happened for Loa. He went, okay, about the cancer thing. You're a guy. You're, you're 57 years old. And the Lord is saying you need to get up here to get healed tonight. After a little while, he went, okay, look. What do I need? Have to get your address and phone number? Get up here. And this guy popped up in the back and ran up front. <laughs> I always thought that was the funnest thing. Get up here. What's the matter with you? And the guy, okay. Yeah, what do you get? Address you live at, you know? But it just was a progressive. He kept getting more information. It's knowing something you couldn't know. There's no way of knowing that. Okay? Now, the day I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, they were, they were, this is exactly what they were doing. They were showing us what a word of knowledge was. And they're sitting there, and, the, and John Wimber said, there's a lady here with arthritis in your right elbow. If you would stand up, God will heal you. And the lady sitting next to me stood up, dropped her coat off her shoulders, and she had this nasty twisted elbow right in front of me. And my initial thought was, he saw her come in. This is total bogus. He saw her, because that's kind of hard to hide, that thing. But she had a coat on the whole time. He never saw her. Okay? 
it was me, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that God would tell somebody these things. And about the same time, there was a minister called Peter Popoff, who had a little speaker in his ear, a little earphone, and his wife was reading cards in the back room and speaking over a microphone and giving him the information, and he was promoting that he was getting this information from God. So all the fake showed up, and so I was there to expose these guys and showing them that it wasn't, it wasn't God at all. They're fake. So I was going to figure out how this whole thing was fake. And it wasn't fake. And uh, he kind of blew my little head. So kept going. These words of knowledge are absolutely fascinating. You're told by God what is happening. Um, there's a guy named Dave Roberson. He wasn't expecting this. He had been praying in tongues for months, uh, he, the way he thought was, was the first time he's a pastor he says okay so he waited for the whistle to blow at the factory in the town he was in which started the day and as soon as the whistle blew he prayed in tongues until the whistle blew for break and then he took a break got some more coffee when the whistle blew he went back into tongues until break for lunch and that was what he did five days a week <laughs> prayed in tongues all day okay he didn't realize what it was doing inside him and what it was cooking him. And so they had what they called a lay fellowship in their town. And they had these people come in and they're teaching people all different things. And he, he remembered sitting there playing with the ripples in his coffee cup, bored out of his mind, just what in the world's going on and just playing with the ripples in a coffee cup. And he just happened to look down at the lady sitting next to him sitting again. He looks over and the Lord opens up her hip like an x-ray and he looks right straight into her hip and sees this deformed, damaged hip. It just blew his mind. He went, oh. You know, wah, wah. Like I said, he's still, still playing with his coffee. And he looked up at her and she says, she looked at me like, what? He says, you have a bad hip. And she says, yes I do, young man. And he says, can I pray for you? This is in the middle of the service, right? Guy's golden-throated order is up there doing his thing, and he's, can I pray for you? And in her mind, she says, he's going to go home, and in his closet, he's going to pray for me. How nice. She says, yes, young man, you can pray for me. He stood up right there. I think he says he even thinks he spilled his coffee. He's not sure. He stood up, turned around, grabbed the lady's feet, and pulled them up to her chest. <laughs> up to his chest. Here she is, kind of dangling like this. And he says, in Jesus' name. Now, when he grabbed him like this, the one that had the bad hip, the side of that bat, the, the foot was six inches shorter. Than the, I mean, the leg was six inches shorter. And he had it like this, and he says, two, two feet like this. And he's causing a disruption, and the, the guy up front sent his assistant to, to quell this little problem that was happening. And so the guy walked over there and stood over just in time to watch that leg pop out six inches. Ow! And she goes, I'm healed! <laughs> I guess, I, oh, I guess and they're all freaking out. This whole section is just all freaking out. And she's just sitting there, wow, like this. And he didn't know what else to do. He's standing there, standing there, and there's all these people looking at him. And he goes, uh, duh. Okay, not exactly the best way of doing it, but it worked very well. Well, see, he had a, that story continues because all this thing is happening. People are looking at him, will you pray for me? And he started just reaching around and touching people and people were being healed. And they kind of like run him out of the room because he's disrupting everything. And he happened to walk down into the youth ministry where they were having a youth meeting at the same time. And he walked in, saw somebody that was sick and touched them and they got healed. And he started walking down the aisle and people were just getting, it's just a, just a, and he walked down front and says, anybody want what I got? And the whole youth group got baptized in the Holy Spirit disrupted one town in one day just completely disrupted the whole thing okay now you can you'll get pictures words sounds some other way god will show you something this is this is a, a powerful powerful thing but if you're thinking only of yourself he can't tell you something else is happening in somebody else okay so you got to know this stuff you got to be open to it it's the main way of knowing to heal somebody when the Lord tells you somebody has a sickness. Now see, that's the big deal. Because if, if Linda all of a sudden said, well, I feel there's somebody here that has a bad back. And I would say, who has a bad back? You know, and 
somebody pop up their hand, I wouldn't go pray for them. I send Linda. Why? God told it to her. She's the one that does it. Which is why people get into fear. Because they want to tell me and then send me over to go heal it. No, that's not the way it works. No, God told you, you go do it. It's simple. But we will make sure it's a safe environment for you to do it. We'll help it out. We'll be there with you. Discerning of spirits, which is the third of the revelation gifts. You're seeing things. You're seeing or you're hearing or understanding a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits has been so misunderstood, okay? It's a revelation of what is in control of that person, what is happening through them. It's understanding what is influencing them at the time. It could be the Holy Spirit. It could be a human spirit. It could be the, whole, the demonic spirit. But you're going to find a discerning of spirits. This doesn't mean that you're going to be knowing the names of every demon. Okay? Okay, it, you're going to know what kind of spirit you're dealing with. Okay? This isn't trying to find out the name of the spirit. You know, what is your name kind of thing. We're not, we don't do that. That's not where it's at. But you will know if when you're going to heal somebody, if it's a spirit of deafness, a spirit of lameness, is it caused by a spirit? Is there something else that's there? You need to know and be discerned through that. You need to discern what's, what's happening. Is it the Holy Spirit that's all over somebody? Or is it a manifestation of a demon that's all over somebody that's causing disruption? Okay? You need to know by a discerning of spirits. Sometimes it's just their human spirit freaking out. You need to know. You can't cast a, their human spirit out of them. All three of the revelation gifts work the same. You just know it. It's something that you're getting. It's not something you had to work up. It's not something you had to, ha, that you're trying to find. It's the Holy Spirit telling you something, showing you what to do. Many times, though, they are in conjunction. You get a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and a discerning of spirits all at the same time. It happens. You just know what to say, what to do, and who's got the problem, and why it's there. You just, it's just too fun. Very simple. But you must be tuned. You must be ready. You've got to be tuned what the Holy Spirit is doing. Okay? Too good. Power gifts. The power gifts. Everybody wants these. This is what everybody's looking for. They want the power gifts. Yeah. Faith. Now, this faith is different than the faith of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is God's character coming through you where you can trust Him and you know faith. This one is not. This one is a different thing. It's an infusing of supernatural faith that comes on you. Now, these are fun. These are fun because all of a sudden you believe in anything. You believe it's going to happen. Okay? There's no fear. Absolutely. Man, you're just faith. You're just infused with it. It just comes on you. Okay? And it's a flood. It floods in, but it doesn't stay. This is a kind of... I was talking to a guy that was at a um, uh, healing conference. He was getting nothing. He was not... Nothing was happening. He was... And he was so discouraged. And he's just... So they told him to go back to the prayer room. Great. They're sending somebody that's discouraged back into the prayer room where they had all the people on cots and terminal diseases and everything else. And he goes back there and he walks in. He said that he, he felt like his entire spirit and soul was a wet noodle. Just nothing happening. Ugh. He was just like, oh, man. He walked in. He's trying to drum up something. He's trying to, okay, what's God doing? He's walking around just praying. Lord, what's going on? And he walked by this one guy, and the guy just looked at him, and they made eye contact. They made eye contact. And he looked down at this guy, and he says, well, what's wrong with you? And the guy says, I'm going to die. And he said... 
looking at this guy, this thing rose up in him. It came from his toes and just flooded in and filled him. And he's just looking. And he says, no, you're not. And he grabbed him and just <laughs> almost rattled him off his cot and says, no, you're not. In the name of Jesus, you will not die. You are healed. And the guy was just, boom, instantly totally healed. He says, yeah. And he stood up and then he felt the plug go off the bottom and all that faith just drained out. And there he was standing looking at this guy going, oh, bye. <laughs> Walked away. Supernatural faith, okay? It just comes in and you believe. He didn't have enough faith to strike a match in about 10 minutes after that, but he just didn't know. Right then, man, he just, poof. We're a faith, infusing a faith. Gifts of healing. I think it's kind of fascinating that they're plural. It's not the gift of healing. Gifts of healing. There's all sorts of different kinds of healing. Folks, listen, face-to-face -face functions in gifts of healing. All sorts of different ways. Man, we, all sorts of different things. There's gifts of healing that go along with it. Gifts of healing, this is the one where people will say, well, God uses me, you know. I have the gift of healing for bad backs. And I've heard people say that. You know, I have the gift of healing for whatever. What they're trying to tell you is that God started them when he started doing things, they started working with bad backs. And one guy says, oh, you work with bad backs? And boom, like this. And he just started getting an influx of a bunch of people with bad backs. And so they had this feeling that they've got this thing. Well, what's it done? It's, it's increased their faith to the point of saying well, bad backs are not a problem. So they'll just keep working on bad backs. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. That's okay. Okay. They'll just keep working on bad backs until everybody's straightened out. I like it. That's fine. It's when they can't be used in anything else. Because they say, no, I do bad backs. And they get a pride going up about what things they do. That's when it gets twisted. That's when things get twisted. Okay? Plural. It's not yours to manipulate. The people who have the thing with bad backs can't go into the hospital where they have the back surgery ward and then start doing all whatever they want to. It's not something to be manipulated. It's something the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. You've got to do it as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's knowing what is needed and knowing the power to get done what is needed. Gifts of healing. I love it. I, I think that's just a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay? Very exciting, by the way. That is a, a, a good thing. Gifts of healing. Now, I can tell when somebody has been hanging around with compassion, they get more of an idea about healing. People who don't want to get into healing have very little compassion. I found compassion to be the key to this thing. When you start really being concerned about what's happening in other people's lives, that's when healing starts to happen. Okay? People who don't care about other people, who just, nah, not, they don't get excited about healing ministry. What is the deal? Find their compassion level to be right about their ankles. Okay? It's just not, not deep. It's very exciting. Working of power. Now, working of power is just that. It's the energies of the dunamis. Okay? It's working power. It's making it happen. Um, some translations say this is uh, the working of miracles. Okay, that goes with, uh, that's cool. The day that that lady standing next to me was healed in her elbow, that was a working of power. This wasn't just a healing. This was a reconstructive miracle where I could hear God reconstruct the elbow 18 inches in front of my face. You could hear it pop, grind, snap, move. You could see the whole thing move the whole time. God was recreating an elbow. That's a work of power. That was a recreative miracle right in front of my very face. Man, that was exciting. I enjoyed that. Well, I didn't enjoy it. Actually, at the time, I was freaking out. I was not enjoying it because I was in absolute and abject fear that God was real. After all these years of knowing him, I didn't know him. But man, all of a sudden, God was real. It, it really shook me. 
I enjoyed it later, and I enjoy talking about it now. I really enjoyed it, but back then, enjoy it? I, I don't know. I was in fear, okay? Freaked me right out. So, working of power. Dunamis, the dynamite power of God, okay? This is just, you can see power happening. I like it. Miracles, recreation miracles, are externals, okay? Um, it's not just even about healing, Okay? A working of power is to tell the storm to shut up. There's no healing involved. You understand? I mean, this is a, something big was happening. Working of power is the feeding of the 5,000, feeding of the 4,000. Recreative, totally. How do you create out of nothing enough to feed 5,000 people? Right? That's, re, that's creative power. See, that's his, that's his power. I love these. Externals, okay, sometimes they're you know, not always have to be healing, but when it's a healing, it's a, a, a working of power, you'll know it. Pow! Poof, things are different, okay? It's <laughs> just pretty exciting. Requires supernatural communication. God is going to have to tell you what's going on. It requires being with the things of the Holy Spirit, what He's doing, what's He want to do. I love it when Jesus says, okay, His compassion saw the crowd and says, they're weary. They've been with me for three days and they haven't eaten. He says, send them off to, you know, or let's, let's do something. What do you want to do? And then the Lord showed him what he's going to do. And so he says, hey, so Andrew, what are we going to do with these guys? See, I like this. I, that sounds a lot like things I would do. So tell me, what do you want to do with these guys? Oh, man, if we send them out now, they're not going to utilize it. Well, why don't you feed them? What? All we've got is five loaves and two fish. Yes, yeah, so you feed them. Word of knowledge. These people are hurting. Word of wisdom. Here's what you do. Work of power. Boom. See? They're all working together. All three can be spectacular. The faith, the um, gifts of healings, the working of power. All three can be spectacular, but here's the problem with the spectacular. The spectacular can be very subject to counterfeit. So when you start seeing all this spectacular all the time, it's really hard when that happens under your hand to stay humble. So the spectacular has a tendency to twist your insides. And that's, you got to be careful. You got to make sure that it's, it's God and Him only. It requires maintaining humility. That's true. Okay? You are only the channel. You just happen to be the water pipe in the position to flow this thing in the right place. Okay? So it's a beautiful thing. Water pipes do get wet. You're going to get a blessing out of it. It's going to be doing some wonderful, wonderful things, but that's where it's at. Inspiration gifts, or the vocal gifts. Prophecy. I love prophecies. Speaking a message from God. Now, this could be telling someone exactly what they need to hear. It's what God says is a message to that person. If it's a personal prophecy or to that congregation, if it's a public prophecy. Prophecy is just prophecy. It's just speaking the heart of God. Care and practice under scrutiny. Care and practice under scrutiny. Man, you got to learn how to do it. Have we seen prophecies go wrong? Boy, have we. Okay. Have I ever had to stop anybody in the middle of a prophecy? Yes, but not in this church. Okay. I've not had to stop anybody in the middle. I've had to correct a, a little bit of stuff afterward. Not a big deal. Uh, one guy that I remember in Golden was saying I had to just stop him. No, nope, that's not right. Stop that right there. But I do it carefully. I'm not about to just humiliate somebody and to just rip them up. I said, uh, just wait a minute. Um, you're a little off on that. Let's concentrate on that a little bit. Let's talk about it later and then see what the Lord wants to give. Okay? Just, well, he still took it all personally. What do you mean I'm off? It's unscriptural. It can be to a crowd or to a person. Prophecy can be to a crowd or to a person. Doesn't matter. It's all fun. But it relates God's heart to them. But I gotta, I gotta tell you something. There's people who study prophecy their entire lives. Okay, Rich Harris comes to mind. 
um, the books he's written, the different things he's done. Okay, he's around here. He's, you know, he's done stuff. Been fun. But he'll tell you it's something he has to always continually grow in. Okay, he doesn't feel like he has the absolute grip on all there is to know about prophecy. You should never be able to on any of them. So it's kind of fun, but you got to relate God's heart to people. But in the process, I've heard people say, well, all prophecy is just all positive. No, I know that there are prof prophecies that says, you better be careful. And I've given warnings to people in the Holy Spirit, and people said, how, how dare you do that? Well, how dare I not? They need it. They're warning. They're on the edge of falling off the cliff, man. They're in the edge of causing great problems in their own lives. So what do I need to do? I need to give them the prophecy that, hey, there's a problem. Um, lots of times when I've prophesied, um, I've had to say, all sorts of, there's been all sorts of good stuff, and then a little caveat on the end where the Lord says, however. You say, well... Has the Lord ever done that? Have you ever read the, the letters to the churches out of Revelation? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, however. See, so, yeah, he's got heart. Can be about future things. Really can. You can talk about future things. However, it will not be specifically directional. Okay? I feel the Lord is telling you to sell your car and bring all the money to me. And, you know. <laughs> no. Um, we're really careful about directional prophecy. Uh, it can't be, can't be that kind of directional. Okay, so you got to be really careful with that. It isn't about specific direction. Tongues. I love tongues. They're fun. This type of tongues that he's talking about, though, is public. There are four different kinds of tongues. No, I'm not going to teach you on all the four different kinds of tongues. That's what I did the last series for. But this one is about public tongues. Okay, how fun is that? It is a word from God to the body, just like prophecy, only it's in a tongue that they don't understand. It requires an interpretation, which brings me to the next, next manifestation, which is interpretation of tongues. Yay! They kind of come in a package deal. Now, this is kind of fun. Brendan could have a, pro, uh, a tongue and not get the interpretation. If he does that, everything stops until we get an interpretation. And then finally, Kimberly decides to be obedient and give the interpretation. Amen. Now, the reason I said that is because that shakes all of us. You understand, when there's a tongue, everybody goes, is that it? What is that? What is that? What is that? Should I do it? Is that, you know, is that me? Lord, what are you saying? I mean, it gets kind of a little spooky right there. <sighs> okay. But the Bible does say, let he who have a tongue pray that he interprets. So if Brandon had the tongue, he's going to be praying right after that tongue is over. Oh, Lord, if there ain't nobody else, then it's got to be me. Okay? When I hear a tongue in the church, as the pastor, man, I kick into real severe praying at that point. I want to know if it's of God, if it's right, if the person who has the interpretation, I'm listening very carefully. You got to understand, this thing, it just cuts everybody into praying to God. That's what it should do. That's the value of the difference between tongue and interpretation and a prophecy. A prophecy, somebody can, stands up and they give the prophecy and everybody goes, oh, that's cool. When a tongue is given, all of a sudden everybody's involved. That's what makes that fun. Okay? Got that? Interpretation. Tagged with tongues and tongues with interpretation equals prophecy. The same thing. It's a two-person prophetic team. I like the way you put. I like putting it that way. It's a two-person prophetic team. One gives the tongue. One gives the interpretation. Can this be misdone? Oh yeah. Just like anything. Just like anything. Remember, anything that's spectacular can be counterfeited. And tongues and interpretation is spectacular. So it's prophecy. It can be counterfeited. This is why it says that, that you got to wait for the judgment of those that are around it to see if that was a good prophecy. Okay, and if tongues and interpretation is, a, is the same as prophecy, we also have to judge that one. Now, the other thing is, people said, they'll, they'll count syllables. Oh my I'm not kidding. 
They count syllables. And God said, and they're going, okay. They said these many syllables, so when you say this, this got to be this many syllables. No, don't, don't be silly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's never been around foreign language people. Okay, I know that I could get Raluca up here and I could start talking and she would be doing it in Spanish or Romanian or whatever else she knows, you know, Upper Slobokian, I don't know. But it was, you're going to find that I'll say something and I'll have just so many syllables and she'll say something and it may be a whole bunch more or it could be a whole bunch less. Okay, I always used to amaze me when I was uh, preaching with Alex. Okay, and we were so close to the things of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'd rattle off this whole sentence. He'd say about four words. Go, bip, bip. You're going to finish that? <laughs> I did. All right. And then I'll say something just like this. And I'll say, ba -da 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 are you done? I'm getting there. <laughs> I gave a thought that couldn't be well explained without. A whole bunch more understanding in that culture, or whatever. And so it, just, it was so fun to tag team with him because it wasn't always just ba boom, da boom, ba boom, ba boom. It was ba boom, da 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 da, and ba boom, ba beep, ba boom, ba ba dee bee, ba boom, ba ba. For me to give a prophecy is easy. I've done prophecies so often. For me to give a tongue rattles my cage. It's just different. I have to trust him more yeah, for a tongue. Control. Yeah. Under that category. And then I'm frantically praying for the interpretation. <laughs> if you want to increase your, your prayer life, do a tongue and then... <laughs> okay. You must be open to being used. Okay? I, I love it when somebody comes in as a visitor and they, get, they come up with a tongue. The entire congregation looks at them like, <gasps> Are you weird? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> And I say, coming from this company, you're asking them if they're weird? All right. Okay. The manifestations are of the Spirit, not of you. Got to know that. There's a fear factor that is overcome by compassion. Okay? There is that. You have to be thinking of others to do this right. You have to be thinking of others. You have to be dealing with your own stuff. You have to. This is what it's all about. There's all sorts of examples through the Gospels except there's no tongues interpretation in the Gospels. Not that I can find. Anybody got something different on that one? I'd like you to show it to me. It'd be kind of interesting to have a tongues interpretation out of the Gospels. But you've got to understand that Jesus was alone. He was the only born-again person. So for him to give a tongue and the interpretation might have freaked everybody out. But he did say in the Old Testament, I speak to these people with a stammering lips. Okay, so it was possible. Did you do it in a synagogue somewhere and freak out everybody? <laughs> Could have. I, I just have never found it. Okay, but I found all the others. Okay, Jesus flowed in all of these. He flowed. And it's really kind of fun to look at all the different things. It showed that he had a dependency upon the Holy Spirit. But sometimes when you look at them, there's all sorts of manifestations happening at the same time. Okay, like this one. Matthew 17, 24 through 27 says this. And they having come to Capernaum, those receiving the didrachmas came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the didrachmas? And he said, Yes. <laughs> and then walked away. I think that's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> he didn't pay it. He didn't. He said, Did he pay it? Yes. He walked away. I think that's, that's hilarious to me. And when he entered the house, Jesus anticipated him. Okay, what's he getting? Word of knowledge. He anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom did the kings of the earth receive customs of tribute? From their sons or from strangers? And Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Then truly the sons are free. He's messing with this poor guy's head. Okay, totally messing with him. But that we may not offend them, Jesus says, going to the sea, throw in a hook, and take the first fish coming up. And opening his mouth, you'll find a stator. Take that and give to them for you and me. And a stator paid the exact didrachmas for two people. I think this is too smooth. Now this is, this is hilarious to me. 
Word of knowledge of what Peter was going on was going on in Peter's heart. Peter's freaking out. He didn't like it. He said, well, what do you think, Peter? And then he gave him all this other teaching. Should it be the sons or the strangers? Well, the strangers. Well, so we don't offend anybody. And he's teaching them all over the place. Was it a word of knowledge that there was a fish that had swallowed a coin? Okay. Was this a work of power? Okay. It was a word of wisdom. Now you go out and do this. See, there was a word of wisdom there about an action step. Go do this. Was it faith and working of power? Was it just, was it a creative miracle? Did he create the coin in the fish's mouth? See, I, I don't know. There's not enough information given, but you got to know that this, this is totally supernatural. There is nothing here that's just natural. Manifestations. What is easier? Now, this is the one where, you know, the, they let the guy down through the roof, and he says, your sins are forgiven you. And they all freaked out. And the Bible says, knowing their thoughts. What was that? Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom when he says, now, which one is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? And he says, but so you know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. He says, rise up and walk. Come on, there's all sorts of neat stuff that's happening in that. Gifts of healings, maybe power, faith, messing with people. Isn't, that's got to be a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. The woman at the well, come on, this is too funny. Hey, I, I need something to drink. Well, who are you to ask me? You're a Jew, I'm a woman. Samaria. I guess he says, well, if you'd known who was asking, you would ask me and I'd give you water. It doesn't, doesn't end. What? What are you talking about? Give me this water so I don't have to come here. He says, well, go get your husband. Word of knowledge. She's not married and the five men she's had, he hasn't happened. And the guy she has now is not her husband. Okay, it's just like, wow, he had a lot of information all of a sudden real quick. He said, call them. Call your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. Ah, oh, I see. And I love that line. The, one of the best lines in scriptures. I perceive you're a prophet. <laughs> I just love that. Picked up on that little subtle hint, did you? <laughs> you know, just like, no, I perceive you're a prophet. Bang. Okay. Then what do you say? You know? Go. He told it. And she went in, brought up the whole city. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Too cool. And Ananias and Sapphira, it wasn't even Jesus. This is an ax. God told Peter. And he says, is this how much you sold? He says, why have you conspired to lie to the Holy Spirit? And the guy died. Talk about a work of power. And faith. He saw his wife coming in. He knew what was going to happen again. And he was still, still sticking with this thing. Uh, you see all this discerning of spirits. It was the wrong one. You following me on this? Too cool. Calming the storm, work of power. Okay? He also knew what was going on in their hearts, discerning of spirits, that their human spirit was freaking out. Okay? Withering of the fig tree. It's an external. I just, that one just, Jesus walks up and he knew that it wasn't the time for figs, but it was flowering. It was flowering out of season. When it flowers, it has figs. So he figured he, it had figs. It didn't have figs, so he cursed it. Roots and all and that dried up. Work of power. Completely wipes out physics. How about this with Paul? Here he is later. This guy is an antagonist in all the courts. And he says, you will not be able to see for a season. He made him go blind. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. There's all sorts of stuff happening right there. Okay. Loaves and fishes, we talked about that one. Agabus and the prophecy. Agabus came to Paul and says, and took his girdle, right, and wrapped up his hands and says, this is going to happen to this man in Jerusalem. And it was a lot deeper than Paul took it. Paul took it wrong. And if he had been given, taken it right, he would not have done what he did in Jerusalem. Pretty, a pretty amazing time, but Agabus had gotten a prophecy for Paul. Okay? It could have had in it also a word of wisdom, don't do this. Okay. During our services here, having a pain that isn't yours. When you're sitting there in, in the worship service and whatever, and all of a sudden something starts hurting and it wasn't hurting before, chances are that's the word of knowledge that somebody here has that pain. 
That has happened to me. I'm sitting there going, why all of a sudden is my elbow hurting? It wasn't hurting. And I'm going, what's going on? And the Lord says, hello. Ah, somebody here has an elbow that's hurting. Who is that? Ah, would you stand up? The Lord wants to heal you. We've got to understand there's ways of doing that here, okay? Having a pain that isn't yours is a phenomenal way. Okay, sometimes when I have things that I'm looking, I'm asking for people, and it just turns out I have a pain. All right. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, well, maybe somebody else should get the word of knowledge and come heal this thing. Okay, that's a, I don't know how it works. Amen. <laughs> thinking of a certain disease or injury, you're sitting there minding your own business, worshiping, and all of a sudden you see a broken ankle. You just see it. Or you're sitting there and you're you just see a diabetes, an insulin needle. What's that? I said, Lord, trying to tell you something. We've got to be tuned to these things. It has happened to you without you knowing it. <laughs> you must be led by your compassion. If you're not, you'll not give that word what you just got. Okay? It starts with thinking of others first. You've got to start thinking. <coughs> being open and willing. Willingness to be used. So what do you do? You tell a leader what's happening. You come to somebody and say, I, f I feel this happening. Can we? Okay? That way it's all under authority. It's all under submission. It's all working out. Okay? You don't want to redirect a worship service the way you want to do it. You've got to make sure it's all in submission that God is doing stuff. You follow me? It's not a big problem. Listen, I do not mind somebody walking right up and whispering in my ear while I'm playing the bass. Okay? I'll quit singing for a second and listen to you. I may quit playing the guitar because I'm not one of those guys who can play and talk another kind. I may stop. <laughs> that's okay. It's truly, it is okay. If that's what God is doing, I want to know. If you're feeling something, and then I'll just wait for a second. We'll do whatever. Let the Lord do it. Make it work. If God tells you, he will work through you. Okay? That's exciting. However, we will all come together and do that thing together. It's too, too, too cool. No fear. You've got to get rid of the fear. No fear. Now, I bet even um, Liz can tell you. She's been around the block a few times. Huh? Yeah, isn't that true? In doing different ministries. Does fear stop a person from doing the ministry? Absolutely. Absolutely. I ain't saying that. I'm not doing it, right? That's it. We've got to do things naturally supernatural. We've got to do these things like it's just normal. It's just happening. It's got to be just a normal thing for us to be doing this. Naturally supernatural. How else are we going to know what God is wanting to do with somebody? People come in and they, they don't tell you they have a problem, especially if it's an embarrassing problem. This is why we have to be careful what we say. You know, it's one of those things, and I've heard this before. Well, somebody here has hemorrhoids. If you'd stand up, God will heal you. Then it's just <laughs> number one, they ain't standing up real quickly, that's for sure. But it's going to be embarrassing. So what do you say? Lord says that there's somebody here with hemorrhoids. He has said that. He has done this because they are painful. They are bad. You understand? So you say, if that is you, come see me after the service or come see me he says Lord wants to heal you I'm not going to embarrass you okay you got to make sure there's people body ministry it's where the body ministers to the body you guys ministering to each other it's not about just the leadership now what if you're wrong well then we are going to take you out back flog you <laughs> beat you with sticks no we're not what if you're wrong what are you going to say if there's somebody here, I feel the Lord says that somebody here has this thing, and nobody stands up. Number one, you can't guarantee that you're wrong. Maybe somebody did have something, and they don't want to talk about it. Or maybe there's nobody. So what? You stepped out in obedience, and God still rewards you. Okay? So what if you're wrong? Big deal. Okay? And what are you going to do? Pray for somebody? That's going to do what? Damage them? No, you're going to pray for... It's, Come on, this is too good. This is one of those wonderful things. It's, it's God doing stuff. But we've got to learn how to do this in a safe environment, which is right here. Okay? When I taught on this, like I said, it didn't increase in words of knowledge. The fact is, it kind of shut them off. People quit doing prophecies after I taught on it. That kind of like bothered me. I had to encourage people to do prophecies. 
Why? Right, we, we encouraged it, but it just didn't seem to come out right. God is good, isn't he? That's really a good thing. Now, we have what others need. We carry what others need. It's good to have. We get to have fun by giving it to them. Really, really, it's, it's exciting. We get to do this sort of stuff. It's bold. We've got to be bold to see bold results. Got to do it. And we've got to listen to him. Big deal. It just requires humbling yourself. You must submit and hear from him, and we're going to pursue the kingdom. Now, that, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I want everybody to close your eyes. Let's see, if I was back my Baptist, I'd say bow your head and close your eyes, but you don't have to bow your head, you just close your eyes. Oh, okay, there you go, that's better. Okay, Lord, would you come right now? We would like to have an illustration out of, wor of a word of knowledge. Lord, would you come to somebody right now and bring to them a word of knowledge, please? If you feel you get one, just raise your hand. Anybody? I just had a very funny thing happen. I talked about the guy that had broken all his soul ties and finally said, Lord, would you bring one to mind? And all he heard was desert wind. And so I says, Lord, would you have anything for us? And immediately I heard <laughs> desert wind. Too funny. Anybody get anything? Okay. It's okay. It's really okay. We are going to be practicing this quite a bit. The thing is, it's very seldom that we get one because we ask the Lord for one. It's most of the time we get one because we're just sitting there minding our own business. And the Lord comes and brings stuff. Okay? I didn't get one either. What does that mean? That means I didn't get one either. That's all that means. Mm -hmm. I know the presence of the Lord is here today. I know that part. I also know there's people here who need healing. Okay? So here's the deal. If you are in need of healing, okay, I'm going to put it upon you to come and ask somebody for prayer. Okay? You don't have to have a word of knowledge to pray for somebody. You don't have to have a word of wisdom to pray for somebody. What do you have to have? The Holy Spirit in you. That's about it. Okay, so, okay, well, let me pray for us. Father God, I thank you, Lord. You are so good. Lord, we just want to just walk in these wonderful things that you have for us. And Lord, we just ask that you make us willing. Lord, we just need to hear these things and do these things and flow in who you are. And Lord, we're going to give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, amen.